YouTube, what's going on? Go look at cars. We got 164 die cast. Kind of found some stuff. Been stretching it out, though, because not a lot of things have been on the pegs in quantity. By the time they get hung, the collectors already snatch it up. So these are some things that we found over the last month or so that we'll go to share today. Good stuff, though. Still good stuff. We got Green Light. Got Mini GT. Auto World. Giant Lightning. And Racing Champions. So we'll take a look at some cool stuff. Let's get started with M2 because I don't think I have too much of that. Let's go up here. <laughs> get a look at the shop here. While I take this box out. Let's see what we got. 64 A100 window van. Look at this bad boy. Would have been like a slant six type job. Look at this. So lowered chassis on this one. But they moved the wheels out. Got your Dodge script on the door. Let me get the dust off this thing. As soon as you touch them, they get dusty. So I like the uh, dog dish wheels. Got the white striped tire. Two-tone, cream with green. Metallic green. I like a hunter green. Dark tan interior. Very sweet little van. This thing was kind of just hanging out by itself. So I saw it on the peg there. It's got the cool background. See the Dodge print material. And dark green box. So that's one of 82.50. And I brought down one of my vans that had a, a normal ride height chassis. This one's got the exposed exhaust. This one's got molded exhaust. But I was looking at this. I thought this Chrysler van would look kind of cool. I took the screw out of here. Look at the... Uh, headlight there great detail separate headlight detail another good reason their castings are great the van castings the ford and these these mopar vans they look good i thought this kind of looked cool like this so i might go with this for a minute kind of a cool van and this kind of lend itself to have one of them stock jobs so, almost feel like that looks better like that, but I keep going back and forth. <laughs> it's narrower. It's a mobile unit. Anyway, so there it is. We'll leave it on that chassis for a minute. And move on to the next one. <coughs> Back her up. That's kind of cool there. All right. Let's look at this big old green light. This is a Hot Pursuit Series 43. Look at that. I don't get too many of these Tahoes, but I did get this one. The Iowa State Caprice has been hanging around. I haven't gotten that. This is actually exceptional. I might get that eventually. That new uh, Impala Bel Air casting is very well done. So this one I did a tire swap on. And the tires that come on this truck, too chunky, really. And, oh, man, tire fall off. Hold on. Got to rescue this before I show you. There we go. So I found tires that worked. It's actually Greenlight's OG tires that still are on some cars that are released to this day. So... These came from a Crown Vic, and they look a lot better than these. The Tahoe runs a bigger wheel than this. This is the wheel, the steel wheel that they use, but it's like a 20-inch <laughs> or 18, 20-inch wheel. So this still looks like an 18 on this one, but it's close enough. They put the off-road tire on these, and it's just they're not 
you know, these police packages, they're not Z71s. They don't have big fat tires. They have basically high performance tires all season, just like the sedans. They're just in a bigger package. So I flipped them around and now she looks good and it's gonna go very well with the rest of the CHP vehicles. It's hard to get this new body style of 21, 22, 23 Tahoe design. I didn't see really too many images. The previous gen Tahoe's a lot of images online of these, but these are probably just starting to enter service basically. So in real life, so it's kind of cool. Got the dual light bar. Tin and window. Tin and window is painted on, so you can see the orange peel on the windows. Not the best, but it's okay. Now, if you really were wanting to redo the windows, you can actually take them off the casting and then basically put on uh, <laughs> brake cleaner so you don't melt the plastic and kind of take that paint off, but that would take forever. I did go around and clean up the, the paint line around here. I didn't do a very good job. Under magnification doesn't look great, but when you back out, it looks a lot better. So I think after that, just a quick tire change. She's looking good. I knew the tire I wanted to use. I just had to wait to find it. Walmart sells green light the cheapest. If you do have the opportunity to have Walmart, some of the green light they do carry. The door hangers, the peg peg warmers that Crown Vic provided some tires. So yeah, police package Tahoe. There's no markings on it for unit number or anything like that. You can see I didn't glue the axle in yet. <laughs> That's why it keeps coming up. I have to correct the how it rolls still. And that'll be corrected once I drill it out a little bit more and then set it in some super glue. It'll be okay. So there is our new body Tahoe. Very excited to have that. It's very cool. Hopefully we get some more. I do have basically the police demo ones though. So that'll go along nicely with that. Now let's look at a very, very cool casting from Johnny Lightning. This is one of their new ones that came out a couple years ago. This is the awesome RX-7. This one is a 81, black on gray. This is their gold series, which is very popular. I like the gold series, but the gold series carries a lot of OG Johnny Lightning castings that I'm not a huge fan of. So, you know, the Ford Ranger is good. The Mazda on this list here is pretty cool. The rest of them are a little bit older. Z06 is an old Auto World Deluxe. I'm pretty sure casting. So this is in brilliant black. And this is old, but you know, probably from last year, but I haven't, you know, I still don't have the white. Um, there's a gold one. So there's a few that I've missed. I, you know, but as the distribution hits all the stores, a lot of times they're late. Sometimes I'll see Auto Worlds from, you know, a couple of releases back. So, if you're patient, I usually can get the cars I want. They usually come around eventually. So, excellent quality. It's a lot better than the RX-7 I looked at after the blue one that I have. That was part of the two-pack set. It wasn't as nicely done as this one was. And very, very happy to have this. Engine looks amazing. <clears throat> Just awesome with the wheels and tires, too, the size. So, this is really a great car. I mean, this approaches the quality of the bigger brands, the bigger premium brand ones at a sub $10 car. So, they should really put this in the Auto World line. Uh, I mean, that's really what it feels like. The only difference is they use the Johnny Lightning axle system, which I kind of like on this type of situation. They actually roll better than Auto World. And they put a accurate, you know, wheel and tire package, accurate base. Even though it's a Johnny Lightning, it's a great casting. So, awesome car. Hopefully, I'll get more of these. Uh, you know, not a lot of horse, like 100 horses, but the car is light. So, very, very cool. A lot of these, unfortunately, subject to rust. 
So you don't see too many of these left. Generation after that, and then the generation into the 90s, those two, those second, you know, those those generation arcs have a little bit more um, gathered, a little bit more kept up. There's not too many of these early 80s ones left. All right, let's take a look at another vehicle. So this is Racing Champions Mint. And I don't know exactly if it was last year or this year, but here we go. A little expensive, but when you look at them online, it's about what they're going for. So I found this in the store, and I realized it was one of the old Ertl castings. So I'm a big fan of those. They're much more accurate than some of the Racing champion stuff is. And they have the multi-piece, you know, uh, body and the chassis. So I flopped the tires on this. This has these tires to came with. Not very good. Very, very thin sidewall. And there's no, there's barely any detail on the tire. So I put the chunky green lights on it. And uh, we'll take a look now. So it's supposed to be like that, uh, that wheel cover on the steel wheels that the Mustang had in 69. 69, one of the best body styles for the first gen, second gen Mustang. I mean, it's based off the 64 chassis. Um, so there you go. Multi-piece bottom. So we got axle, leaf springs, exhaust, drive shaft, transmission, engine, front suspension, radiator core, um, and, and the front clip. So all that's kind of cool. Um, it's all on there. Makes for a very, very nice setup. Plus, has opening hood with uh, Ram Air. I think this is a 351 car. This is a Mach 1. With a, yeah, it's a Mach 1 car. So it's probably small block. But some of them had the bigger motor in them. And it's got the hood louvers or the window louvers, which are accurately done. I mean, it's a very good casting. And it's older. Uh... I don't know if they can see the original date. Yeah, they renewed it. So, I mean, this is going back to the premium. And then, of course, the trunk that opens with the, it looks like a fuel cell or battery box. It's kind of funny. But it, that's what makes these awesome. I mean, this is an older casting. This is like a premium car. You get this in like a window box or like an acrylic box kind of deal, clamshell. So... These were like big deals back then. So I try to get them filled in and they, they, they kind of just under the radar issue, reissue these, retool or restamp them out under these Racing Champion Mint lines. The other car that's like it is the 69 Camaro that they do. And then that old Chevelle, but, and the, and the, uh, well, they got a 68 and a 70 Chevelle. Those are decent, but they're not as good as this Ford. I actually had some of those hanging up on the pegs. This one was the best. It's kind of like that Starliner that they've done from the Ertl line. Great, great car. So if you see this or if you see it in a set, sometimes they'll sell the, the set online. I try to blow it out on the web. And you get all six cars for like 30 bucks, 25, 27 bucks. So, and if this is part of it, this is a great casting to get. What a car. I still need to take the axles out of the wheels. They're a little bit wobbly, but we'll we'll get that handled. Let me see if I can get the zoom on there. There we go. So, just a cool car. It's nice to have a 69 Mustang uh, around anyway. That's in a good uh, casting that's got the unique features with the opening hood or the and the trunk. So I have an opening trunk. That's great. So, there we go. <clears throat> now. Let's look at some Auto World, and first I'll, f I'll share with you a find that I just found today. We found an Ultra Red GT40, which we're not going to take out of the package. So this is probably number five or six of my Ultra Reds that I found in the wild. But I haven't, you know, I don't buy them or anything. I don't collect all of them. But you know, as far as all the chase cars, I feel like Auto World for for recently has been my most luckiest finds and this one is awesome just a great casting so this is their new uh, road legal 
homologation GT40. So very few of these were produced. Obviously, they had to get the rules part of that sports car and GT class and experimental. You had to have uh, cars that were sold to the public that were like the cars you were racing. So this was basically, in, in the 60s, the bar is fairly low on getting <laughs> a race car into a street legal uh, situation. Really not a lot of crash dangers and stuff. So these cars are almost identical to the race versions. Uh, very few modifications were needed to put them on the street. So they were great. And the other thing was, you know, very few of them, you know, you'd buy these cars, but very few of the cars were actually used on the street. They were just immediately put into a race service um, instead of being used. So very few of them survive in their original condition, basically. But this is great. So base, this is release three from 23 or 22. But we will open... We'll leave this one back here so it doesn't get messed up. But that's this why I share that. I got some of those ultra reds. Sometimes I'll put them online on Instagram. And we'll take a look. But let's look at this forward. So I didn't get this last time. But I wanted to have this. I already have a grabber blue uh, Ford from Greenlight, which is this generation Mustang. But this one's a boss car, I believe. Yeah, no. California GT Special. Okay, so sorry. Looks like a boss. They use the same wheels. So this one's pretty sweet. It's going to need a little bit of an adjustment, it looks like, but not bad. So we've seen these Mustangs before. This is going to be a 12 car. So right before that little bit of a facelift in 13, 14. Uh, 5 liter car. So the new Coyote 5 liter. You get automatic or 6 speed manual. Car came with a lot of trims. This is kind of a middle trim. I uh, get the V8, uh, leather, that kind of thing. No roof. Let's take a look. But, again, Auto World's very, very good engines. Very, very nice looking engines. Got the air intake and the strut tower brace, all that stuff. So, these are great cars. Very, very powerful for what, for what you pay for. Very fun to drive. Compliant suspension. They're not, you know, razor sharp cars, so the stock one, they handle well, but they're very comfortable. And these are very nice. They got a lot of headroom. This is probably one of the most comfortable pony cars of the era. And then Camaro is very tight, <clears throat> and the rest of the car is kind of tight. But this one you could uh, have fun with. So painted headlights, so they're not the best. I think that's where the difference in the green light casting is, is that their headlights are, are uh, lensed. But pretty cool. Probably got to use the alcohol and get that smudge off. But uh, other than that, not bad, not bad. There it is, Mustang. You got your GT California Special. All right, let's put it over here. You can see how similar 69 was the influence, too, on this body when this Mustang came out originally. The chassis in 2005, um, you know, with, with tweaks into that one. But basically, this is a big influence on that car. And you can tell if you look at it side by side. All right, real quick, let's look at this stealth. This is just kind of filling in the collection with different colors. Basically, it's the same car over and over again, different colors. I don't know what the other color was for the silver. This is release four version A. That other car was at least three, and then the Ford was a version A release three. So this is a release four car, so I was missing some. So we already looked at kind of some of the other stuff, but we'll do a quick look around. The 3000 GT is going to be coming out pretty soon. This is going to be in dark silver. It's a 93 Stealth RT car. Collaboration with Mitsubishi Motors, blah, 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 blah. So this one has limited edition again numbering. So this is release four and this is release three. See, look, it says limited. So I wonder if they're going back to publishing the numbers again. We'll keep an eye on that, I guess, and see how it goes this year. So 66 Suburban. Oh, this looks, this must be really old. <laughs> yeah, I probably got an old one. This is probably 2022 release four version A. That's what we're looking at. Or 21. Oh, man. Yeah. So I must not have had the silver one. 
So that that sucker probably was hanging there for a minute, wasn't it? <laughs> there, I think I solved my own answer. So let's take a look. Very clean. Kind of like getting the silver because it lays so well on the casting. So you know, really not a lot of paint runs, and you can see how clear the casting is. So kind of like it for that reason alone. Yeah, this stuff is kind of an interesting looking vehicle anyway. Let's take a look and see if we can see that, that Mitsubishi engine in there. I think it was a 24 valve motor. Yeah. Very, very cool looking. You can tell they like what they do over there. Excellent rolling car too. So, there you go. Alright. Not much more left. Let's park this over here by the other ponies stealth so you can't see it all right let's unbox this i've been waiting to get this and uh, let's show it to everybody so the lightning buggy van series based on their very old tooling this is probably going on 20 years this tooling i guess but you got a mopar and a ford but what i like about this is this was actual advertised uh paint schemes graphics packages for these vehicles so this was like factory stuff so i like it and this one in particular as it says down here was part of a, a set so you can get a pinto panel van little compact car and then you can get this truck and uh the same color scheme with the silver and everything so very very cool i think since they look silly with their narrow chassis we're gonna try to lift them i want to lift these vans put some cool wheels on them but I love the color scheme. Or, I'm going to look at this green light here in a minute. Let's, uh, let's look at the wheels again on it. Because I really feel like if we, the original advertisement on that Ford van was with the Ford full wheel covers. So, and, and the Mopar ones and everything that. It's quite the, it's quite the packaging. Look at that boogie vans and uh these are the two packs that you can get big in a bond bed boom there we go all right take a look this one's sweet i'm glad that uh i waited for <laughs> finding these in the in the wild so you can see here it's a little well a little bit of flashing there but not bad so big and littles with the side pipes. And then they had a tampo on the, the window there. Just a cool van. Very, very cool. And I think it's wide enough for 164th. A lot of times they're very narrow. I feel like the Dodge is a little narrow. So we'll see. Let's look at the street van. Look at that. Awesome. These wheels on this one with the turbines or the old slots, that looks very, very period correct. This one probably will leave it alone. The plastic, it's funny, they do the plastics on this, the plastic wheels, and they got the rubber ones on this one. Kind of funny. Let's take a look down there. Nothing much to look at, but we'll take a look anyway. They do roll okay. Again, you're gonna need a little bit of spacing. You can see they rub against the chassis. All things that, you know, matter to some and matter to none. Little details. I really do like this van, though. Very, very cool. And you had to buy it in the two-pack. They don't do it singles. So, very, very cool. All right, let's look at this bad boy. Root beer brown with the old Mopar arrow. Very cool. So... These will look great in the background. I think these need to be a little bit more part of the scene up here at MIGS. So maybe these will be in the back for a while. Maybe we'll lift one. Maybe we'll slam one. I just don't know. Maybe I should get more of them and then leave these alone. <laughs> well, we'll just have to see. All right. Let's get on to a casting that, uh, well, I've been waiting for a long time after Greenlight teased it. Um, it's the old 82 Ram. So brand new for this 23 year. They were teasing it in 2023. Vintage Ad Series 8. Look at that beautiful advertisement. Just 
fantastic. So this is when it was still Dodge, you know, before Ram did its own thing in the 2000s. Look at this beauty. And these are the other cars. The 73 Ford F100, that's kind of cool. It's a orange. And also I haven't seen the 89 Taurus yet. So I'd like to find that. But let's get it out of here. Let's take the dust off here. So. All right. So here she is. I love this thing, but there's been some issues. Um, first, the grill is great. Headlights, see how the headlights are inset perfectly. They did the tampo work and the and the bumpers, fantastic. Wheel covers, wonderful. Tampo work, good. Now we're starting to get into an issue here. I do not like how, uh, this is more of a rectangle and a square. I believe this is, should be a little bit taller. Right there, so that bothers me a little bit. But the big thing is the wheelbase issue. So, uh, it, if you look at it from here, this is too short, or this is fine, but they need to move this forward and then shorten this area. You can see the gap there is debatable. Let's look at a Chevy, eight foot bed. This looks more natural to the eye. This is what the look we should be getting from that Dodge. <clears throat> Dodge didn't have a, your own unique. Now, beds used to look like this with Ford when they had the camper special. They used to extend this part of the bed and push the axle out because when you had a pickup topper camper, a lot of it would go past the rear bumper. So they wanted to push this out so it wouldn't have so much overhang. But that was for camper specials, not for the 82 Prospector. It had a regular 8-foot bed that looked more like this. So just a, a hair longer here. Or if you wanted to keep this look, because this measured out okay, we got to move this back and shorten the bed. So there's a big issue. Now it is 8-foot, so we look pretty much the same. I'm trying to do this on camera. It's actually a little shorter. Believe it or not, maybe, but it still doesn't look great. So, and of course, the other issue that green light seems to always have is the ride height. It's a little too low. Now we look at the two wheel drive advertisement again. Let's look. I mean, it just sits higher, right? It's not that low. It looks for close. But uh, I'm glad that they, they, they have the actual reference material out of the package to tell you how messed up it is. So, and all the beds seem to be the same way, um, unfortunately. Hopefully, they'll change it, but that would mean they probably have to change the base, and that requires a lot of expense. So, we'll just have to live with it, you know. Maybe someone else is going to do the D series. I, I feel like... Auto roll with all their announcements recently about the new tooling, they probably might tackle this one. I do like the front end on it. The cab is good. Now the dualies were going to be nice because we don't have to worry about the bed. So when they do the the, uh, the rancher bed, the flat bed, there's no issue, right? They do the dually setup, the Cummins diesel trucks. They're going to be fine. The cab is pretty good. I mean, this is bothering me. How it looks like it's chopped, but other than that. I mean, look at the steering wheel. That's that 82 steering wheel from Chrysler. Beautiful two-spoke. And I love the Tampa work, the Ram. So, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, we'll, we'll live with it for now. You know, it's the only one. I do like the color scheme. You know, very 80s with the brown. So, it's again, it's a love-hate with this one. I love it a little bit more than I hate it right now. I'll put it that way. <laughs> it's a little frustrating. All right. Last one, we're going to look at this old girl here, 750 Li. This is the Miho North American exclusive with the clamshell. Uh, Mini GT, some black sapphire. They're going to be doing a blue Alpina. They're going to be doing like a silver or another color or something soon. So I, should, I really do still get in the international boxes with just the box, but... This one, I just was unsure because they have a left and right hand drive, and I wanted the left hand drive, and it seemed like the Miho ones in Porter were left handless. One was 
great car. A lot of these are hybrids, I guess, now. But you can probably, I think you can still get the V8, the, the, the Turbo 6s, I think, maybe. I don't think the 12 or the V10 anymore. I uh, didn't do too much research on this. But basically, these cars are just, you know, rolling computers. They have full digital dash screens. They got all the safety equipment. Self-driving, pretty much. Heated and cooled everything. So, but having it in the scale, another executive sedan to match up with my Bentley. Uh, I think that's the Flying Spur car. So, this is very sweet. I like full-size sedans. This is one of them. They captured, of course, just like Mini GT always does. All the lines are proportion. Great detail. Metal chassis. And these cars are big. I mean, this car is as big as that Dodge. So, <laughs> it's kind of fun to have a big sedan like this. The Tampa work is tremendous. I mean, you can see how small the 750i is in real life on this model. And there's no smudging. They did the cutouts for the exhaust correctly, where they'd have the actual exhaust, and they would just go through a bezel on the bumper. So that was kind of cool that they included that, and you can look through the bezel and see the exhaust tips, just like on the real car. So that was very cool touch. Of course, you got your defroster lines there. A little heavily applied, but it looks good. All black interior. I haven't really seen Mini GT do anything with their interiors but black. Hopefully, maybe they'll do a line where they do detail the interior because the interiors, they're very detailed. But we can definitely take the vehicle apart and we can detail the interior. If I wanted a brown interior, if I wanted a light gray, you know, if I wanted to replicate someone's vehicle or a car that I saw that I like the interior color, it's pretty simple. Interiors come right out. Grill work is very good. It's got black wash under there. That's been done very well. So... I'm just very happy with this car and it rolls just wonderfully. It's got the taller tires, kind of like that Hyundai Kona that we played with earlier on an earlier video and rolls very well. Looks very good too. Love it. Wheels are beautiful. All right. One more, <laughs> one more that we're going to look at. Um, this is a big girl, but I like this livery. It's the 85 C65 Chevrolet propane truck. We've seen a lot of nondescript propaners, but this time we got a cool old one that looks awesome. This looks like something that'd be on a train set, but it's all on Meg's garage. So... I tried getting the tires to kind of lay good on there. It still bops up and down. I have more of these tires, so we're going to just do some mix and matching. And we'll figure out how we're going to get this thing to roll straight. But I'm not going to cut this one up. I've cut up ones in the past because I do like this. The, the cab on these I love. So, you know, this actually looks good like this. <laughs> uh, but this is my old race truck. She kind of hangs around, but this is awesome. So metal base, metal cab, we got plastic tank. Then we got our hose set up and our meter right there. So this is a sweet old girl. I love the livery with the two tone, the white and red. So, and it's got the flammable placard up there and then the back. So I just, this thing is sweet. I just got to get it to roll straight. It's more pronounced on the passenger side, I think. But whatever. So This probably would have had gas, not diesel. Still in the 80s, they were using a lot of gas. But some of them had diesel engines, too. They were cool. I mean, you drive these trucks, they had the old stick shift with the two-speed rears and everything like that. You know, I don't know if a propane truck would, but a lot of them did. And they were just kind of cool trucks. All right, well, I think that wraps it up. We got more to come, but I think we're going to do some more scales. We got 118 that rolled into the shop, so we'll look at 118, but that means we got to clear all this off, so <laughs> it takes a minute. There's my Land Cruiser Alley back there. Um, just getting some stuff done, and just stay tuned. We're going to have more cars and trucks to look at. Hope all you enjoyed today's video. Everybody be well. Thanks for your comments, new subscriptions, 
all the thumbs up, likes, um, just everybody hanging out in the old uh, channel. So hope you enjoyed it. Be well. Till next time.